Take your seats. Um, our next session will be chaired by Dr. Brunet, and uh, you have the chair. Uh, please take over. So, okay, I'm going to try to be a chairman. Maybe I am a little bit too young to do this work. <laughs> keep it, keep it. When I am completely wrong, you are <laughs> Brunet. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> So it's a new experience. Third session, the late pre-humans and the, the early humans. The first is, of course, our friend, the professor Yves Coppens. We are going to speak around robust and gracile hominine to answer to a climatic challenge. Yves, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Michel. So my title, this seems uh, quite ancient, like I am. But actually, you would see, and after having heard you uh, all these hours, it seems to be quite uh, actual. Robust and grisai. Robust is OK, but grisai is not. How many need to answer to climatic change? In this communication, I just want to make a point, just one point, and no PowerPoint, actually. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> a tentative demonstration of the existence of a correlation between the hominid evolution and the evolution of its environment, so in many. So everything is there, correlation, hominid evolution, evolution of the environment. So it's finished. So first, uh, history. In 1967, three teams, a French one, an American one, and a Kenyan one, organized together a scientific expedition to the lower Omo Valley in Ethiopia at the border of Kenya and Sudan. And this expedition, called Omo Research Expedition, lasted 10 years, 1967-1976. This area, Lower Omo Valley was actually known since the beginning of the 20th century as a very rich paleontological site. And as soon as 1933, 1932, 1933, a previous expedition, a French one, led by Camille Arambour, collected there four tons of bones of fossil vertebrates and published them as an homogeneous fauna of the same geological age. And Camille Arbour told me later that he did so because for him at that time, the site was looking like one block, just one block of a few meters of sediments reproduced many times by faults. As soon as we got there in July 1967, we quickly realized, I mean the geologist and the paleontologist of the expedition, that stratigraphically, instead of one block, we were dealing with a beautiful column, beautiful sequence of several hundred meters, between seven and eight hundred meters, of sands, clays, and tufts full of vertebrate remains. After having established 
the geological map of the exposures, we started to collect the fossils and understood that the assemblages were not the same according to the, ge the geological levels. The faunas were changing and their environmental significance as well. The earliest fauna were meaning more humidity, roughly, the latest much drier landscapes. As fortunately we could calibrate the sequence thanks to three methods, a TEFRA-1, potassium argon, a magnetostratigraphic one, and a biostratigraphic one, which is actually almost the best, we were able to obtain quite good datings for this climatic turnover. And as it was 50 tons of fossils that we collected this time, and among them several hundreds of hominid remains, the surprise, well, the surprise at the time, was that when the faunas were changing, and the climate as well, the hominid were changing as well. Two new hominid, a robust, well, here, here they are, a robust one and a gracile one, were appearing side by side with the drier environment. That, that's all. The genus Homo, oh, we heard uh, this morning and beginning of afternoon that it could be Australopithecus, and the genus Paranthropus, as this unexpected data, completely new at that time, you, you cannot imagine, has been first described in 1975, 1975, in the Homo Valley. I called it the Homo event with an H in brackets, a very bad pun, I must say, to remember this pioneer announcement, which actually has been uh, nevertheless completely forgotten. Early species of the genus Homo, maybe, Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis, as well as species of the genus Paranthropus, Paranthropus robustus and Paranthropus boiseri, have been already described elsewhere, but the reason of their emergence, not. So that's the history, it's finished for the history. Now, data. Let's have a look around tropical Africa and its early hominids belt. Uh, that, that's for you, uh, Zerah. Hominids belt around tropical Africa, Ethiopia, of course, included. To see what was happening between a little more than three to a little less than two million years ago. In Chad, a 3.5 million years old Australopithecus, Australopithecus barrel gazali, has been described by Brunet and Al, but this hominid is a bit too old for our purpose, and no hominid later than that one has been yet found in this biogeographical province. In Eastern Africa, in the Afa area of Ethiopia first, the earliest Homo, 2.8, 2.8 million years old, has been announced quite recently, 2015, at Lady Geralu's site by Villemoiré and Al. A very robust and odd Australopithecus, Australopithecus gari, looking like occupying the Paranthropus niche, has been described in 1999 by Asfaw and Al, at Buri, around 2.5 million years old. The Afar is looking like a sort of independent biogeographical area, so we have in Afar the coexistence of a robust species and of a gracile one at the right time. In Eastern Africa, again, number two, in the Konso area of Ethiopia, True Paranthropus boisei has been collected this time in association with early Homo erectus-like species and early Achillean assemblages. 
This important spot has been published by Walt de Gabriel and Anal in 1997. Number three, in Eastern Africa, again, in the Omo we were just talking about, the earliest gracile hominid species that we have is probably 2.7 million years old. It's difficult to call it Homo for sure yet. As far as the robust hominids are concerned, we were fortunately uh, fortunate to discover there, Arambour and myself, the earliest one, the one that we call Paranthropus ethiopicus. The holotype is 2.6 million years old, but some remains of the same species seems to have been found in levels a bit older, 2.7 million years old as well. As we have Paranthropus boisei in less ancient levels, in the same sequence, we may have the possible filiation, Paranthropus ethiopicus, Paranthropus boisei, in this Homo sedimentary deposit. These data have been obtained by the Homo research expedition, as I told you, 1967-1976, under the direction of Francis Claire Howell from Chicago first and Berkeley after, Camille Rambourg uh, during three years, because he died, and myself, and by a new expedition called Expedition Paleontologique de l'Homo, led by Jean Renaud Boisserie since 2006. Four, in Eastern Africa, again and again, in the Kenyan part of the Turkana Basin, east and west of the lake, have been found the very first so-called Homo rudolfensis, 2.4 million years old, and remains of Homo habilis, of Paranthropus ethiopicus, and of Paranthropus boisei. So we have in this very rich and complex group of sites and localities, like in the Homo Valley, which actually is hydrogeographically and geologically a part of the same Turkana Basin, the filiation of the robust hominids, Paranthropus ethiopicus, Paranthropus boisei, and side by side, the intriguing couple of species of the genus Homo, or not, Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis. Number five, in Eastern Africa, in Tanzania this time, at Peninj in the Natron area, Rich Licky and Glyn Isaac have collected, as soon as 1964, a superb lower jaw of Paranthropus boisei. Number six, in Eastern Africa, in Tanzania again, in the famous site of Olduvai, Louis Leakey discovered and signed or co-signed the very first Paranthropus boisei, uh, called, previously called Zinjanthropus, and the very first Homo habilis, well, we heard that uh, it may be some, something else, somebody else, but anyway, the gracile uh, hominid. Number seven, in Eastern Africa, in Tanzania, Terry Harrison from New York published in the upper levels of the lightly sedimentary column, the very first remains of Paranthropus ethiopicus found outside the Turkana Basin in 2011. It is coming from the upper Dolania beds, about 2.66, 2.66 million years old, the same geological age as the one of the holotype we describe in the Homo area. And this author insists about the clear turnover of the fauna just before the emergence of Paranthropus. Number eight, in East Africa, in Malawi this time, Tim Browage and Friedman Schrenk have been lucky, lucky enough to discover in the 90s Homo rudolfensis, maybe. Uh, at Uraha locality and Paranthropus boisei, for sure, and Maleba locality, both in the Shiwondo beds, level of a clear climatic shift. For more qu'il invente. So, southern Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Malawi 
could be considered as a bio biogeographical province distinct from the Afar one as well as from the South African one. Number nine, in South Africa, has been described for the first time the genus Paranthropus and its species uh, Robustus by Robert Bloom at Swarth in 1948. We heard about that this morning. The genus Australopithecus and its first uh, species Australopithecus africanus by Raymond Dart at Daung in 1925. And the new species Australopithecus sediba by Lee Berger that we will hear soon at Malapa in 2010, and the genus Homo, probably, several times. So we seem to have in South Africa a robust Parotropus lineage and two, two gracile lineages, one with Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus sediba. This is my, my feeling. I will have trouble with uh, Lee, which means that, uh, uh, and, and, and Homo, well, two Grassi lineages, one with Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus sediba, and one with Homo, which means that three lineages, one robust and two Grassi's, seem, seem to have lived there in uh, contemporaneity, so thousand Africa is by itself a biogeographical province, the third one, the only one with three answers to the same climatic crisis, to the same climatic crisis. Conclusion, what are my conclusion? The demonstration of a climatic change between roughly three and two million years ago has been done many times, established astronomically Oceanographically, oceanographically, geologically, biologically. It is obvious, it is obvious that the hominids at that geological, geological time were part of the ecosystem. So as all the flora and all the fauna are reacting to this crisis to survive by anatomical adaptation, new species, extension, modification of distribution, departure, arrivals, substitution. It is obvious that the hominids are at the same time doing the same thing. It's so logical for me. Lacroche? No. And this is the reason for me of the emergence of this new genera and species previously mentioned, Parotropus strong with a superb dentition adapted to a new uh, vegetation, vegetarian diet, but with still a small brain, and Australopithecus and Homo, gracile, small body, better aptitude to walk and run, but with a dentition for still vegetarian diet for one, an omnivorous an omnivorous diet for the other one, a small brain for one, a big brain for the other. So many new researches, this is my point, many new researches are now conducted in some of these sites we were talking about, the Homo, the Cannabisin, or the Vine. And some of their conclusions are not confirming this correlation, how many evolution, evolution of its environment. Or more precisely, emergence of Paranthropus and Homo, climatic crisis. So I am curious, just curious, just open, to know more about this conclusion, and it is the reason why I invited Jean-Renaud Boisserie, who unfortunately could not come, and Sandrine Pratt, who fortunately is here. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. My point is, and for the moment remains, when you are in front of an obvious climatic shift, the one which happened around 2.7, 2.8 million years old, uh, millions ago, 
when you are in front of an obvious tentative adaptation of the whole flora, of the whole fauna, to this climatic turnover, and when you find among this fauna a similar tentative adaptation to a drier environment of the hominids, not once, but at least 10 times, Afar, Omo, Conso, Turkana, Peninj, or Dubai, Italy, Malawi, and several places in South Africa, for a scientist, it's a statistical obligation, almost a duty to believe and claim that everything is happening as if the emergence of the so-called robust paranthropus, as well as the emergence of the so-called uh, homo or some Australopithecus line, are biological answers to a climatic change to a drought. The very well known one that the geologists have described at about the same time as us paleobiologists. Thank you, thank you very much. Merci.